It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for another Dev Diary where we're going to be talking about, well, mainly commandos. So, they've added a new ability called acclimatization, a new function, a new feature. And it is a way now that troops can be formed better or worse depending on the climate they are currently fighting in. So currently, there are two main climates, cold and heat. So, as you probably would imagine, desert of Africa or maybe middle of Asia will suffer from heat and also cold for instance well what was a good example of cold I don't know I guess maybe the Eastern Front um, so troops that aren't acclimatized will suffer from penalties firing those terrain areas particularly if the weather's bad suffering from worse overall effects so as you can see in this case these troops here in this cold terrain are not acclimatized so they're using the regular camo and they become acclimatized and they do change to the winter camo so they actually know <clears throat> they have fully become acclimatized to that area now i'm not sure because the actual dev diary itself doesn't explain how acclimatization works whether you've got to exercise whether you've got to fight in certain terrains or whether you just need to put troops in those areas and they will eventually become acclimatized i'm not actually sure um I would imagine if you are exercising, that probably would increase how quickly become acclimatized, maybe? I'm not sure. So, what this is probably going to do, I would imagine the reason why they've done this is to stop people from switching front lines so quickly and aggressively. So, one popular tactic in multiplayer games is to uh, send German tanks to Africa to help out the Italians. Now, that's great, but the problem is, is now those troops that arrive in Africa won't be acclimatized to heat hot weather in Africa, so they'll suffer from a penalty, which in all fairness is a good thing, because those strategies where you send a massive 40 width, one 40 width uh, German tank division to Africa, and they just plow through and steamroll Africa, it's pretty of a wonky strat, to my honest opinion, because it, well, it throws off the balance of the game, really, so France and UK always lose Africa. So in that case, they'll suffer from some penalties, and hopefully that will do a lot of damage to the division itself. I imagine it will probably affect the attrition. We haven't got the stats on any of these screenshots to say how it will affect the... Uh, um, well, I'm, I'm assuming that it would increase attrition quite massively, because that's what cold and hot weather tend to do in most games. They tend to increase attrition by large amounts, particularly in warm weather. Okay, so the harsh effects of weather effects have been increased. So we've got blizzard, snowing, extreme cold, very cold snow, deep snow, very hot and extreme hot. Um, these weather effects now have been increased. The damage they can do to your divisions have been increased. So acclimatizing is is almost, well, I'm going to try and say more required, less required. It, it does have more of an impact on the game itself, so it's going to be more required for your troops. You just mentioned about heat attrition here. I understand, so is this saying that the heat attrition will be 10%, and because it's acclimatized to hot, it's now 5%, so it gives you an example there of uh, well, how much this can reduce it by, in this case, 50%. Yep, so that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think of any instances in multiplayer when this will have a, a massive impact. I imagine on the Eastern Front with a lot of cold, that's going to be an issue. Um, most of temperate Western Europe is probably not going to have much of an impact. And definitely Africa with the heat, that's for sure. Yep, and also it's kind of cool that they also do look different. So you can see troops now that use different camos based on the where in the world they're going to be fighting. So we're going to see less instances of troops switching from certain climates over to another really quickly because they will suffer from more of a penalty. And it also, now think about it, it will give an incentive for USA to land into Africa first and fight in Africa to, to acclimatize. Well, actually, now think about it. Acclimatizing to warm weather is not going to help them in Europe, is it? But still, I guess if you do land into Africa, um, they're going to have a bit of a more of a trouble fighting there because of uh, need to be acclimatized where they... So there's going to be two factors here. So just to kind of roll, roll back here. So one, troops that are going to be fighting for a while are going to have more skill points, the generals themselves. The experience of the individual troops will be higher and they will be acclimatized. So there's going to be like so many layers of factors of troops that have experience over others, which I think that's what Germany is lacking in the game. Germany has a lot of experience of fighting in Poland and France. So when they engage in Barbarossa, they should have all these kind of layers of extra experience on top of themselves. So they should fight against the, the Soviets initially really strong and then maybe teeter off late in the game maybe anyway i'm waffling on yeah so yeah so just to summarize one of the things that was said in the dev diary it reduces if you're acclimatized by 100 percent, it reduces all the factors of these bad weather conditions by 50 percent yeah 50 percent uh there's also an adaptable trait the generals can get to which increases how quickly you do become acclimatized uh, and there are also some technologies that will increase acclimatization as well. Anyway, moving on to special forces. Special forces now are overall 
more special. It means that now limited based on the total number of divisions your overall army can contain. So it's a similar way to it works to sending volunteers to a civil war. You can only send a certain amount of volunteers based on your overall army size. A very, very, very large army, you can send a larger number of volunteers. And in this case, if you've got a very, very large army, you can field a larger number of special forces. Uh, in this case, you've got 315 battalions, 30 divisions, and the maximum number of battalions, I think this is battalions, of special forces is 24. Yes, it is, it's battalions. So it's not measured based on division size, it's based on amount of the battalions. So now, you will now see a more realistic interpretation of how special forces were used they're not going to be uh not going to be in the case of let's say romania or italy where all their army is going to be consistent of mountaineers or marines for instance you are now going to see infantry as the main bread and butter of your army and then special forces as kind of a well, in this case, special forces. It'd be cool as well to give them an extra buff as well. I think that'd be sweet as well. Like, if they gave them extra buffs towards the certain things they actually did. Because at the moment, I think the buffs they give them are a, bit, a little bit lackluster. For instance, for Mountaineers and Marines. I think they could be better. Better. Also, they've added some extra technologies to give extra buffs to special forces as well. Uh, it looks like they're gaining extra defense here and organization. Uh, division training time plus 10%. So this, ah, interesting look. This, does this increase the training time? So what these technologies are doing, well, these are the first technologies that actually have negatives if I'm misreading, if I'm not misreading this. So what they're doing here is these technologies will buff your special forces, but they will also make special forces take longer to train. Interesting. So that, these are the first technologies, if I'm not wrong, that actually have a negative effect on your army itself. So what this is doing, just to kind of give a real life example, is it's making your special forces recruitment process more rigorous. So therefore, screening clients more heavily, harder training routines, and in this case, well, overall resulting in a more refined, uh, more powerful special forces. It's interesting because these techs here, these two, this one and this one. And interestingly enough, there's a there's a choice you've got to make here between these ones. I imagine the choice is going to be making the special forces more special and having a more rigorous recruitment program, therefore giving benefits. And this is with making the special forces overall larger, but probably not gaining as many benefits. Interesting enough, I wonder what this last one does here. And then again, what does the first one do as well? I'm not sure. The next dev diary will be about the Chinese warlords, which I'm assuming they're going to have their own focus tree. Either each, I don't know, maybe they'll all have their individual one, or probably not, I don't know, maybe we'll see. I'm making a lot of assumptions here. Yeah, but that's pretty much it, guys. How do you guys feel about this? I think this is probably one of the best updates we've done in a, a little wee while. I like that they've changed special forces to limit their impact, and the climatization is really cool. If it does actually have an impact, though, because there's a the truth is that these, these, um, these negatives here, for instance, for attrition, they're not really going to make much of a difference overall if we're still going to see a lot of, like, Unacclimatized troops appearing in random areas of the world, but then again, it will make you. It will make the players make a decision. Like, I, I, is it worthwhile sending my huge tank division to Africa if it's not acclimatized to desert conditions? I'm not sure. One other thing I did forgot to mention as well is cold and heat. Um, they're not interchangeable. You can't have someone acclimatized fully on cold and fully on heat. It's kind of like a yin and yang, left and right thing. It's either going to be in one direction or the other. You can't have both. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to like and to subscribe. Drop us a comment below if you've had any input. And apart from that, I hope you have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.